Okay, so this is the third session of the workshop of uh, building a successful online course. Uh, the first two sessions have been posted on the Brown Center uh, blog website. So you should be able to access those from there. Uh, again, just to recap what I did on the first session, I copied over a uh, previous course um, from a previous semester to my fall course, uh, fall semester. And I also showed how we can integrate a third party learning platform. The one that I use is Cengage MindTap, but there's others out there, of course, that you may use Pearson, MyLab, uh, McGraw Hill, I think, has Connect. Um, there are several others that do integrate with Blackboard. If you use one of those other platforms, um, I'll be happy to work with you to get that integrated. I do have some experience with Pearson, uh, not with McGraw Hill, but you could reach out to Heather Evans Anderson, who is uh, who works, who, who's an expert with the McGraw Hill uh, Connect and integration with Blackboard. And I also showed how we could synchronize our gradebook inside of Blackboard from our learning management um, from our learning platform. And in the second session, um, I showed how we could create and schedule our own online assessments and uh, tests. Um, I showed how you could create one from scratch using Blackboard or how you could uh, import publisher questions and answers or test banks into Blackboard as well. Also showed how to set up a discussion board and how to, if you're using, a, whether you use the publisher questions or your own, I showed how you could randomize a pool of questions. So each student gets a different question when they take a quiz, which is important in an online environment because one thing you'd like to do in an online environment is minimize any cheating that may happen because we're not able to proctor the students as we are in a classroom. Okay, when you're online. So you're not sure exactly, right, what the students may be doing while taking the test if it's in an online environment. So today what I'm going to show is how we could quote unquote proctor our students while taking a quiz online or even in a hybrid or high flex environment. If you're teaching in that type of environment this semester, the tools that I'm about to show you will also work inside of the classroom as well. So um, I'll be showing how we can use what's called the Respondus browser. I do use the Respondus browser inside the classroom. And what that does is it basically locks down the computer so only the Respondus browser can run. And the Respondus browser is just a web browser that takes you to Blackboard. So when a student opens Respondus, which by the way should be installed in all labs across the university, um, if it's not installed in the lab, or if you have a lab that computers and students have to bring their own laptops, I'll show you how they can download and install Respondus, where when they open it, it will only open inside, uh, it will only open the Blackboard website, okay? It won't allow them to go anywhere else while taking the quiz, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and click in my Programming for Analytics Fall 2020 course here. And this is the one I've been setting up uh, in the previous workshops. And as I mentioned uh, that in previous workshops, I like to use the weekly module, which is part of a template that is provided by IT, the ULA department. So definitely reach out to them if you'd like this template. And um, inside of each weekly module, now this class I go two weeks, uh, I cover material every two weeks. So each, my, each one of my modules is for a two week span. So in weeks two of three, I have um, everything we're gonna be covering in those two weeks. Okay, so I have the readings here. And again, everything links to MindTap, uh, which I showed in session one. Uh, I do have slides, sometimes I use slides and you can put your slides in here, your PowerPoints. Um, here I have my links to my in-class assignments. Okay. Now last session, what I showed was how when I use in-class assignments, I like to create my own um, 
assignment within Blackboard where the student can basically submit what they worked on during class. So each class I have them submit an assignment. And this is a nice way to just make sure they attend class or at least watch the recordings if you're publishing the recordings after class. And what I'd like to do is I do create a test, even though it's not a test. I like to create it as a test because test is the only way that I can put in a password. Okay. And by putting in a password, you can you make sure that the student does actually show up to class because they won't be able to access this assignment any other way. So unfortunately, it has to be called a, but I do tell students that it is only an in-class assignment. And I put it in that in-class assignment group that I spoke about uh, in the first session when I went over the uh, how to use the grade book. Okay. So I do put a password in there. And I display it after a certain time. I don't, I, I uncheck the display until only because um, if you if you display it until a certain time, it, it's difficult for them to go in and be able to review your feedback. They can do it from the grade book, but not all of them know that. They're used to going to the weekly module, seeing that, um, seeing that assignment, clicking in it, and then seeing your feedback. So that's why I keep it displayed. But what I do is I do give it a, a due date of 819 of, of whatever the day is of that lecture at the time the lecture ends. Okay. Now, if you're leaving this open all day, you could just put end of day here. But if you want students to attend class and work on this during class, set the due date to the end of class. And then I check this where it says do not allow students to start the test because I want them to be in class and submit it during class to get credit, okay? Okay, so I have those in class assignments. And then I also have a quiz. Now this is a test as well, okay? But I set the options up a little bit different for the quiz. The first thing I said was force completion. This means that it has to be done in one sitting, okay? I also set the timer for 60 minutes. Uh, my class is 50 minutes, but I add a little extra, 10 extra minutes there, um, just in case I need some extra time to, to submit it. But I do have the auto submit on. So if they go longer than 60 minutes, it is going to submit it automatically. Okay, I do the display after. I do not check display until, because I this, again, they like to go and click in it so they can review it. And if you say display until it disappears from that weekly module, I don't put a password in here for the quizzes. The reason I don't put a password is because I'm going to show you Respondus in a bit. And when you use Respondus, you have to put the password in the Respondus options. And it will tell you in the Respondus settings, do not put a password in the quiz if you're going to be using Respondus. So if you plan on using Respondus, leave this password blank, OK? Then I have the due date. And I do check this, um, but if there is a student that needs to take it afterwards, you can just go in and uncheck this if you need to. OK. OK, and then everything else is pretty much the same. OK, so right now, if I were to give this quiz to my students, it would be available during the class time on August 31st, and they can go in and click it. But there's nothing preventing them from using the internet, right, to find the answers. Now, there are things that I do, such as creating my own questions, um, giving variations of questions so everyone gets a different question when they take the quiz. Uh, that will prevent cheating. But there are still things that they could do, for instance, um, especially during tech, if you teach a technical course, there are a lot of websites out there that um, will actually take quizzes for you. Um, if you pay them, they'll go in and take the quiz for you. And, um, and you wouldn't know, right, because it's online. Uh, or they could maybe have a chat window open and can be communicating with someone, typing in questions and getting the answers from them. So there's still ways, even though I, I take these measures to prevent cheating, that they could cheat. So. That's why I use Respondus. 
So I use Respondus Browser again in the classroom. That locks down their computer. Only the quiz is open. Okay. Now, a lot of you may use, have like open book quizzes. My quizzes are open book. So I don't mind if they go in and, and look at the textbook if they need to. So the problem with the lockdown browser is, you know, if you have an ebook, for instance, which a lot of us do, including myself, like I have an ebook in MindTap, I want them to be able to access that ebook. Okay. So what I'm going to do for my quiz one, now this I created uh, in the last session. Okay, but I'm going to add a little bit to it because what I want is the student to be able to access the ebook from quiz one. So here's how I'm going to do it. Um, I'm going to basically give them a link to MindTap so they can click in the MindTap link and access the ebook as they're taking the quiz, even if they're using Respondus. Now, remember, if they're using Respondus, they cannot exit this quiz. So you have to put a link inside of the quiz that they can click on to get to it. Okay, so here's how you do it. Uh, I'm going to go to my MindTap link. Now remember, the MindTap link is where I have the link to the MindTap course. Okay, so this is what I'm going to show them the first day of class. They're going to click on this link and register for the course, and then they can always access the MindTap from this link. Okay, but what I want to do is I want to grab the URL, right, the web address of this link, and I want to put it inside of my quiz so they can click on it inside the quiz and get to it. And the way we do that is we right click on the link with your mouse, okay? And then say copy link. Okay, this is going to copy that URL into your clipboard on your computer. Okay, so it's in your memory now. So now if you paste it somewhere, it's gonna show the actual link that you just copied. So now I'm gonna go back to my quiz, okay? And I'm gonna say edit the test, okay? And I'm going to come up here where it says Canvas Quiz 1. I'm going to click this arrow, and I'm going to say Edit. Okay. Now, this gives me access to a description of the quiz as well as the instructions. These two sections will appear at the top of all of your quizzes. So this is a good place to put that link. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and type in MindTap. Okay, so I just have text, it just says MindTap. I'm then gonna select my text and I'm gonna click on this button right here that says insert edit link. Okay, I'm gonna click on that and then it's gonna ask me what the link path is. If I do a control V, it will paste the link path, right? Or the URL to MindTap from my course. Okay, and this is important down here where it says target. If you're using Respondus, you do not want to open in this window frame because then what will happen is it will take over the tab that's opened inside of Respondus and it will the, the, the students won't be able to get back to the quiz. Okay. And remember, in Respondus, you can only have one tab open unless you have a link that opens another tab. So for the target, we want to say open in new window. Okay, this will, so this way when they click on this link, it's gonna open another tab that's gonna have MindTap in it, and then they can go back to the original tab to continue taking the test. So they can switch back from tab to tab as they wanna look at the ebook. Okay, and then I'm gonna say insert. And there it is. Now notice my text is now in blue with the, with the underline, which tells you that this is an active link. And I wanna make this a little bigger so they see it. So I'm gonna bold it. And I'm going to set the font size to 18 and then click Submit. OK. And now I'm going to click OK. And now when they take this quiz, OK, they're going to click on it, hit Begin. They're going to see this link that says MindTap at the top. They're going to, now again, this is the quiz. These are the questions right here. But if they want to reference the ebook, they click on this link. And it opens MindTap. Okay. And again, I'm just using a regular browser here, but if you were to use Respondus, this would do the same thing. And then you just click on wherever your ebook is, the students know where to find it, 
and then they can read the book if they need to. They can even go back in the past assignments if they want to look at old code. Um, you know, I'm fine with that. Um, just, unfortunately, there's no way to even prevent that anyway, um, unless you wanted to link to the actual chapter, but they can still close out of the chapter and get back to MindTap. So it's pretty much all or nothing, unfortunately. But again, I don't mind if they have access to MindTap. I just don't want them to have access to the outside internet or any chat programs. It will actually open three tabs. As you notice, here's my original content. It opened this tab. This middle tab is just opening the link that opens MindTap. So it goes to that page where you copied the link. So, and then they open MindTap and they can close this tab if they need to. So these are the two tabs that we'll see open inside of um, Respondus. Okay, I'll just submit this. Okay. All right. The other thing I do is, um, oops, sorry. I'm gonna go back to edit the test and I'm gonna go back up here and say edit. I also like to give some instructions as well. So I use this instructions area also. Um, the instructions I like to give are um, this right here, which is a rubric, just tells them how each question is graded. So I put this inside of every every quiz. And, um, and I also have a little thing that says, please use the sandbox to, to uh, test your programs. So uh, the sandbox could be a mind tap. I, I actually have another link that I use for the sandbox. Um, uh, I guess I can put it in. Okay, I'll go ahead and put it in. Uh, it's called REPL. So if, uh, .it. so if you if this is mostly for programming, so if you use a if you do a programming, uh, if you if you teach a programming course and you want them to be able to program without having to exit their browser, um, this is a great site to do it. I use Python. And they can also do this in MindTap, but they seem to like this better. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this link right here. This opens the sandbox. And I'm going to put a link here as well. And I'll paste that link here. And I'll also say open in new window. This one's very important. Remember to do that. Click insert. And I'll make this just as big as the other one so they see that. Okay, oops, and I want to bold it. Okay, so I give a mind tap. I give them the sandbox. And just to make sure this works, I'll click it. Okay, so they can do their programming here during the quiz. Okay, but still there's nothing that's locking them down into the quiz. So now it's time to use, uh, to set up Respondus, okay? Now, this is probably one of the easiest things I'm going to show you in all of the workshops on how to set up Respondus because everything's done in just one page. So the Respondus did this really nicely where they created a, a content page in Blackboard or settings page where everything can be done right there in one view, okay? Now, the way we're gonna find this is we're gonna go to course tools, come all the way down here where it says Respondus Lockdown Browser, click on that, okay? Now, here's all my tests. Now, remember, I do, my lecture assignments are tests, so they're gonna be here. Anything that you designate as a test in Blackboard will be here, but I just want my quiz one, Actually, all my quizzes, I want to use Respondus, but I'm going to work with quiz one for now. So I'm going to come down here to quiz one. I'm going to expand it and go to settings. And then I'm going to click on the radio button. This is require Respondus lockdown browser for this exam. When I click on that, it's going to open up this screen. Okay. Password settings. Now, this is where you want to put your password. So if you, if you want a password for your quiz, or your exam, you're going to put it here. Um, I don't use the password uh, for fully online. If you're doing a hybrid course, you may want to use it for your for your hybrid course or high flex course. It's up to you. 
Okay. And then here are the advanced settings. Okay. So you, you, you have to expand this to see them. But when you expand it, it will have some settings here where it says lock students into the browser until the exam is completed. I don't recommend this if you're doing all online. Because what happens is if you lock students into the browser until the exam is completed, there is no way that they can exit respondents except that they were to power down their PC. Okay, so um, I don't check. Now, if you don't check it and they try to exit respondents, they will still get a pop-up that says, hey, you, sh you, you can't leave this quiz unless you have a reason. And then they have to type in their reason. So even if you don't check this, if they try to leave respondents, you will get a notification when they're done taking the exam. It will be right here in the screen that says this student exited the quiz at this time. And it will have their explanation there um, if they exited early, okay, before they, before they finished it. So I would say don't even bother to check this, okay, because you're going to know either way. The next checkbox is allow students to take the exam with an, exam with an iPad. Um, there is a lockdown browser app from the Apple iStore and it does work fairly well. I only had to use this one time because I had one student a few semesters ago that had an iPad and that's what he used and he wanted to take quizzes with it. Um, so I allowed it. Uh, other, other than that, I, I've never seen a student use an iPad before in the classroom. Um, and in the business school anyway we require that they have laptops so um but because the option was there and he had an ipad i said well let me go ahead and, and allow him to do it and see if it works anyway and it did work so um that is an option if they have an ipad but usually i don't check it by default if the student has an ipad they can tell me and then you can check it okay this one's the most important acts allow access to specific external web domains so remember those links I put at the top of the screen? The one that went to MindTap and the other one that went to the REPL website for the sandbox? Um, if they were to check, click on those using Respondus browser, it would not open them. And the reason is because Respondus basically blocks out the entire internet. So even though you put a link there that says, hey, this link is going to link to this website, Respondents still will not allow them to go there unless you allow access to it. And this is where we put that. Okay. Here's the other thing. Um, usually the domain is a bit more complicated than something like Cengage.com. So the reason is because even though the book may be on Cengage.com. There's actually a subdomain that it may need to go through. Or sometimes these publishers work with other companies that host the textbook. I think Pearson does this. So Pearson has like an external website that it links to. So sometimes it may go through three different domains before it actually hits that e-text. So this is probably the most complicated part of setting up respondents. Now, because I set it up so often, over the semesters, I know all the domains that I need. So what I do is I keep a little notepad file here that has up here at the top, I have all my domains that I link to. And I just copy and paste it. Now, this is my first domain here, blackboard.stetson.edu. It does need to link back to itself. And remember that middle tab that popped up? Where, where it actually had the link that I was, that I was um, linking to, that needs blackboard.stetson.edu. So you gotta include that. The book actually uses Cengage, gateway.cengage.com, okay? I also, link, it also needs ng.cengage.com, okay? My sandbox uses del, or delmarlearning.com, codevolve.com, these are all domains that's Cengage uses inside of their mind tap. And then lastly, I have the arepl.it. That is to my sandbox. Okay, now I use a lot of different technologies, which is why I need all these. If you have an ebook, you probably only need one, two, maybe three at most. So the question is, well, how do I know what domains it's going to? Right? How do I figure this out? This is what I suggest. If you have a link linking to your e-text, okay, 
First of all, always include blackboard.stetson.edu. Always put that in there. But if you're not sure what the other domains are, just put this one domain, okay? And then click, you know, and then, and then save it. Oh, where is my save button? Oh, here it is, sorry. Save and close. And then what you can do is you can go into Respondus yourself and run it. Now, unfortunately, I cannot go into Respondus here because if I do, it's going to tell me to close Blackboard and close Blackboard Collaborate, and I won't be able to continue this session. But what I did do is I took some pictures from my phone because you can't take screenshots either, just to kind of show you how you can figure out what the domains are. Okay. So here's a picture here that I took on my computer. Now this is using Respondus. This is the Respondus browser. Blackboard is where the, what it's going to take you to when you start up the browser. This middle tab is that Blackboard tab that it goes to to link to the outside website. And this new tab is what it's linking to. Now, if I only put that Blackboard link in there for allowed domains, and if I tried to run this, I would get this blank page and it will say link is blocked at the top. And this only shows up for about five seconds. So you kind of have to be quick with this. And I don't know why, but it shows up for five seconds, it goes away. But when you see it, you want to click on it where it says link is blocked. And then what you're going to see is a pop up that's going to tell you the link it's trying to go to. And you don't have to worry about this entire URL. All you have to worry about is the domain, which is right here, gateway.syngage.com. That's how I knew I needed that domain. So then what you do is you go back in the Blackboard, go into your settings, you go into your external web domains, and then you add, followed by a comma, gateway.syngage.com. Run it again. Click the link. It may come up with that link is blocked again. Click on that. You're going to another domain. It's going to say, hey, I don't have access to this. Come back. Put it here. Okay. I went through this a bunch of times, and finally I got to a point where, okay, all my domains are now in there, and then eventually it works. Okay. So I know it's not the best solution, but, I mean, this is the way that I was able to get this to work. Another thing you may want to do is – if you have a student in the class that you may have taught in a previous semester um, that you would like to, you know, set up an, uh, let's say, a little test for and say, would you mind as a student going through this exam? Just, and you don't even have to give them the questions. Just give them a blank test. What I like to do, actually, and I'll set this up shortly, is I like to give a quiz the first week of class, which is just called Respondus Quiz or whatever you want to call it. And what they need to do is they go into this quiz and they click on the links to make sure it works for them. So you can do that too. The problem is if you have a class of 20 and your links don't work, you're going to get a bunch of emails. If you can select maybe one student that's maybe a straight A student you taught before and say, look, I'd like to open it for this student first. You can do that, and I showed how to do that last session, where you can just go ahead in your test settings, select that student, and give them an earlier date, just to see if it works for them. Because sometimes I find that even though it worked for me, it didn't work for a student for some reason. They're getting a, so they're getting a domain that they can't hit. Um, so that's how I did it. Eventually, what, you're going to have all the domains you need. You won't ever have to worry about this again, and you can continue using it every semester. Okay. Enable calculator on the toolbar. If you want to enable a calculator, you, you can click that. It will give you a button to that they can access a calculator on. And if you want to enable printing so they can print the screen, you can do that as well. Here's a nice little unknown secret. Um, if you link to an Excel file, so you know how I'm linking to external websites? You can actually link to an Excel file. If you Let's say you posted an Excel file on Blackboard and you link to it. It will open the Excel file because a lot of folks ask, well, my students use Excel in class. What can I do? 
you can post the Excel file, a link to it, put it in the quiz, kind of like I gave the link to the external website, link it to an Excel file. And if they click on that, it will actually open up. Now it's not Microsoft Excel, but it is a Respondus version of Excel that has almost all the features. Um, there are some things like, for instance, if you use the data analysis tool pack, that's not going to be there, but most of the Excel features will be there. So even though you can't open these external applications, if you use something like Excel, if you have that link, it will open an Excel version of Respondus. So, um, okay. So that's it. And that's all you need to do. Again, this is the hardest part here, but once you have that working, and I keep going down there. You hit save and close. Okay. Now it says quiz one respires, re requires Respondus Lockdown Browser. Uh, don't change that name, by the way. It's got to have that little uh, text at the end of it. So now when I click on the quiz, it will say quiz one dash requires Respondus Lockdown Browser. They will click on this. Now, if they're clicking on it from a regular website and they click begin, it's going to say, this assessment requires you use a Respondus Lockdown Browser. I don't know why, but it gives you the password text box. So you may get a student that says, I, you know, if, if you give a password, for instance, I'm trying to enter the password, it's not working. That's because they came to this page. They have to read this up here at the top. Maybe they should have put this in bigger font, but they have to know that this requires a Respondus Lockdown Browser. And if they're not using the Respondus Lockdown Browser, they can't open this quiz. So the next question is, okay, well, how do they get this Respondus browser? What I do is I put a link here. Okay, mine's under mind tab. I do it on the left-hand side. It's called Respondus browser. And then I create a content area, okay, where I go ahead and I add a web link. Okay, so you say add web link. And then you just put the name. I call mine Respondus Lockdown Browser. And then you put the URL, okay. And then what happens is it, it puts this here. When they click on it, it will bring them to the website to download it. Okay. Now, here's the thing. We have a special link that works only for Stetson. So they cannot go to the Respondus website and download Respondus. They have to use your link. Okay. Now, IT has this link posted somewhere. Uh, what I will do is I will copy it. And I'll put it right here in the chat window so everyone has it. Okay, and that is the Stetson uh, Lockdown Browser link. Notice when I click on it, it actually does say um, somewhere here. Oh, here it is. Install Lockdown Browser for Stetson University. So what this does is if they download this version and then they run Respondus, it's going to take them to the Stetson Blackboard site. So that's why we need our own um, download. Okay. And then they install it. And then once they install it, they just go ahead and type in Respondus. Oops. In Windows or in Mac, they can find it in their launcher. It comes up right here. Now, here's the thing, Respondus uh, Lockdown Browser does not save the Stetson username and password. So they, they do have to know their Stetson username and password to log into Blackboard. But once they go ahead and open the browser, they log into Blackboard, all they're gonna have is access to Blackboard. And then they're gonna go here to their quiz, and then they can click on this, and then it will open up the quiz. Okay, all right. Now, that's it for the lockdown browser. You can use this in the classroom. I do use it in the classroom. Uh, when I use it in a classroom, I do give a password in the respondus settings. So this way I know students are in the class taking the quiz. Um, I take attendance too, of course, but you never know if, you know, someone tries to take it from home and then they tell you no i was in the class um, thankfully in our classrooms we have those cameras so we can always go back if we needed to i never had to go that far but just give a password it's probably the easiest thing to do if you're in class um and um and that's it and they take it and they have links to what i want them to be able to link to everything else is locked down 
Okay, now the question is, well, what happens if you're teaching online or if you're teaching high flex and half the students are home and half the students are in the classroom and you want to proctor everyone? Okay, how can you do that? Well, all we need to do is go back to our Respondus Lockdown Browser settings. Go here to Quiz 1 settings. Okay, now again, this is, this is my Lockdown Browser settings. It looks exactly the same as what I did before. But if you come down a little bit lower here, it will say monitor webcam settings. Now by default, it doesn't require a respondus monitor for this exam. I want the respondus monitor on, so I'm gonna say require respondus monitor for this exam. If you are teaching a hybrid or high flex course, you can select this third one, which says either respondus monitor or a proctor lab can be used. So this way, not everyone has to use the camera. If, if you have students in the classroom, no sense having a camera, their camera on them when you can watch them yourself. So it, you can click the third one for that. Since I'm teaching all online, I'm going to click on the middle one. It's going to come up with this about respondents monitor. You can read about it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just hit continue because I'll tell you all about it. OK. And then it's going to show you the start up sequence okay these are all the checks that it does when a student when the monitor is activated so the first thing that's going to happen is when a student clicks on uh, logs into respond they say click on the quiz it's going to bring up all of these checks by default the first one you can't uncheck it's the webcam check just make sure the webcam is on and it's working okay you can preview it if you want just click the preview and that's your webcam check. Do you see the image? Yes. And that's it. Then we have additional instructions. So the additional instructions say during this exam, you shouldn't access other resources such as a phone, a tablet, notes, books, etc., or communicate with other people. Please stay in your seat, stay focused on the computer screen until the exam is complete, right? so on and so forth. Um, you can change the, this wording if you want to. I actually do change it, and I put it here in my Respondus TXT file. These are my additional instructions. Now, notice the, the default additional instructions mention that you shouldn't access your notes. I allow the notes. So I change mine a little bit, and I have one for the exam. I have one for the quiz. They're a little bit different. So I'm going to edit this text. I'm going to put my own, which is during this quiz, you shouldn't, it doesn't say exam anymore. During this quiz, you shouldn't access other devices, a phone, a tablet, et cetera, or communicate with other people. And then everything else is, is the same. Unfortunately, I have to do this for every quiz. It does not save your text from quiz to quiz. So you do have to go in and set this up each time. Okay, then we have some guidelines. Uh, I keep this checked. It just says, you know, uh, sit in a quiet place where you're not going to be interrupted. Turn off your television, your radio, run the webcam, check. Um, make sure others aren't streaming videos or using other applications. It's going to slow your internet connection, right? so on and so forth. Don't wear hats, right? stuff like that. Okay, next is student photo. Um, I don't do this. The reason I don't do this is because we know what our students look like. We have that in my Stetson. Uh, at least most of my students I've taught before. I've seen them before in the classroom. So I know it's them. A, a student photo um, would be if you want to see, you know, just have them take a photo of themselves. Um, and since, you're, since the webcam is going to be showing them anyway, uh, it's not necessary. Actually, I think maybe I do keep this checked. It's just, you know, smile for the camera type of thing. And it shows the student photo. You can keep that check. It's the next thing I don't show. It's the show ID. The show ID is where they have to show their student ID on the camera. And if you're teaching, let's say, in a classroom where you don't know, you know, maybe maybe you've never seen this student before. It's an all online university, and you want to make sure they actually go to your school. They can show their ID, their school ID, in, in the camera. Um, again, we, we know most of our students. If we don't know them, we can go to my Stetson and make sure that's really them. I don't need them to show ID, so I uncheck that. Okay, environment check. This is the check to make sure that they don't have any devices 
around them. Now, if, if you don't want them to look at their notes, if it's a co totally closed book exam, um, you want to use the environment check to make sure they don't have their notes next to them. Okay. Um, I like to use it because I actually had cases last semester where a student would have another laptop right next to them. And they'd be doing this, you know, looking, uh, I don't know, looking up answers or doing something before they came back to my quiz. And um, I had to tell them, look, that totally defeats the purpose of even using this tool. So I do an environment check to make sure that they just show me their desk around, you know, their area around their, their workspace, just to make sure they don't have another laptop or even their phone. Maybe you don't want to have their phone out during taking the, when they're taking the quiz. I edit the text here as well, okay? So this says, make sure the area around your computer is clear of papers, books, phones, et cetera. I don't care if there's papers and books. I just don't want phones, laptops, et cetera. So I have my own environment check here. I'm gonna put this here. Okay. Now I put in big letters, important. Failure to perform a proper environment check will result in a zero on this quiz. The reason I do this is because there is no way that Respondus knows that a student actually showed their desk or not. You can say, yeah, I'll do this environment check. And what I was getting is 15 seconds of a student looking at a camera. And that's fine. Respondus has no idea what you're showing. It's not that sophisticated. So I say, listen, environment check means, or I would get something like, a student showing me the entire room around them, but I wasn't seeing their desk. So, so I said, listen, you know, you have to show your, I want to see your desk, right? Your desk area. Um, I don't care what your room looks like. So I put this failure to perform a proper environment check results in a zero on this quiz. And please make sure to capture your workspace, which is the desk around your computer only. Okay. Make sure the area around your computer is clear of external laptops, tablets, phone, et cetera. So I have them do that. And I say, you're going to get a zero. So this way they know, okay, I better show my desk. I've never actually given a zero um, because of this. I usually give like warnings ahead of time. Hey, you didn't do it. Make sure you do it next time. I got to a point once where a student um, just would never show their desk. And after about three warnings, I said, okay, it's a zero. And I was sending him emails, but then finally when he got to zero, that's when he emailed me and said, hey, I got a zero. And I said, yes, you did because you're not showing me your desk. Now, the nice thing about Blackboard is it's going to keep their answers in there. So I said, listen, show me your desk next time and I'll grade your, I'll grade this one. And, and I did that. So I never actually had to give a zero and keep a zero on a quiz, but it's really the only way where I can make sure they don't have anything on their desk. Okay. Facial detection check. Uh, this has to be checked. This makes sure that they're looking at the camera and then they're gonna continue looking at the camera during the quiz. And that's it. And then I hit save and close. And now it will change to quiz one webcam requires Respondus Lockdown Browser. By the way, this is built into the browser so they don't need to download anything else. All you have to do on your end is say, use the monitor feature and it will be activated automatically. Okay. So now the next thing, um, I've spoken to some instructors, they're a little concerned about this feature because you know, it's very invasive. It's a little freaky, you know, you're, you're, you have the camera on and they have to show their, their room where they're working and maybe they won't be comfortable with that. Well, my response is this. I, last semester, I used Respondus in the classroom. And then when we went online, I went ahead and I activated the monitor and I told them all, okay, we're going to use monitor. And I thought for sure I was going to get killed on my evaluations. I said, they are not going to like this. Um, I did not get one negative comment on the evaluation about monitor, not one. I was shocked by that. Now, I did things a little different though. I didn't just say, okay, I'm putting this on, you're being recorded now when you take a quiz and that's it, okay? I, I was very transparent with them. The first thing I did is I created a respondents uh, quiz, right? Where a monitor quiz where they went in and um, they used it before they actually took an actual quiz. 
And then I showed them what I see on my end, okay? And I'm gonna show you what you will see after you give a quiz using Monitor. Okay, now this is right in your Respondus settings. This was in the same settings that I had, that I showed you previously, where you're actually setting up Respondus. Once they've taken the quiz, then you will have another link in the drop down that says, I think it says show results, something like that. So you show the results and it will give you this. And I show my students this. And I say, okay, this is what I saw after you took your quiz. And I show them this little meter here, right? Which basically is in the green if there's no suspected cheating. And if it does suspect cheating, it goes into the red. And I tell them, I do not look at the videos, okay? Unless this is in the red, okay? And if it's not in the red, I'm not gonna look at the video. So that kind of eases their concerns a little because they say, okay, well, he tells me he's not gonna look at it, so it makes me a little more comfortable. Um, now, again, they're going only by my word, but, but I'm honest with them. I'm, you know, I have no desire to watch anybody take a quiz, but if this does go into the red, I'm gonna have to go in and say, hey, you know, look at what's going on there. Now, um, let me show you what happens if you expand this. Now, if you expand this, you're gonna see the video. So I have another picture here. Okay, now I blocked out the student's face um, for security reasons, but if you expand this, right, you will actually see their video, okay? Now you can tell they're not all the way to the left. They have a little bit of, of green there, um, which would have turned into yellow and eventually red. And the reason why this one's a little higher than most is because there were three instances here where they were missing from the frame. So this is another nice thing. If you do get flagged that a student may be cheating, you don't have to sit through and watch an hour of the video. You can just click on these links That'll go right to that section that shows that they were missing from the frame. Now, missing from the frame basically means that they are not looking straight ahead taking the quiz. So what I was telling you last semester where I was seeing students looking to the side on the laptop, using the laptop, the reason I know that is because even though the camera was showing their, they were looking this way at another computer because they weren't looking straight at the camera, it went way in the red, okay? Also, if they were to get up and leave, okay, because you don't know, maybe maybe they have a computer in the next room, they're gonna get up and leave, it's gonna go into the red, okay? So anytime they're not looking at this camera, now, by the way, it doesn't track eye movement, so they can look down like this, and that's fine. And I tell them, if you have your notes in front of you, and if you're looking at your notes, it's not gonna go into the red. That may be a problem for some instructors that do not want them to look at their book. If you want totally closed book, they could technically have something down here that they're looking at and it will not go into the red, okay? But since I find if they have a book or notes in front of them, I tell them, make sure you print it out before, but that's okay. Now, if they're looking over here, then yes, it's going to, it's gonna show in the red, but if they have it in front of them, there's not gonna be enough um, facial detection where, you know, where it's gonna flag it, okay? Um, so that's it, and, and so I show them this screen. I don't go into the videos, of course, but I say, this is what I see, and if it's not in the red, I don't, uh, I don't look at it, okay? I also tell them that it gets deleted because what happens is when I'm done grading, I go in my settings, okay? And then I click don't require respond this lockdown browser for the exam. I turn it off. I don't need it anymore. And by doing that, the students are able to go in and review their quiz without having to go in and respond this. That's another flaw of respond this, by the way. If you keep the respond this settings on, they have to go into respond this to look at their grade and feedback. So I turn it off so they don't have to go back in the respondents to look at the feedback. Um, and I used to think that if you turned it off, it got rid of the videos. It actually used to do that, I think. Um, but I realized yesterday 
that I turned it off, I turned it back on, the videos are still there. So I'm not sure how to delete the videos. I have a meeting with Respondus next week, and I'm going to ask them, how do I delete these videos? Because I don't want them out there, you know? Uh, and I'm sure the students don't either. And I used to think it did delete it, but it doesn't. I even put in my syllabus that they're deleted, but they're not really. Um, if you go back and you activate the response again, they'll be there again. So I want to see how to do that. So, But again, I'm transparent with them when it comes to my view. Um, another thing is I like to show my camera. Um, I keep my webcam on when I do lectures. Anytime I interact with them, kind of like I'm doing now, that also um, I think it helps them you know, understand how important it is and to see, look, you know, he shows me his webcam when he's teaching. All he's asking of me is to show while I take a quiz. You know, I have no problem doing that. And they do it. Um, I also put in my syllabus a little blurb here, if I can find it. Here it is about respondents and i say quizzes and exam require the use of respondents lockdown browser and monitor software which can be downloaded from this link i put the link here in my syllabus too and i say while external applications cannot be accessed when taking the quizzes or exams you will be given access to mind tab which includes the ebook uh, if you would like to refer to your notes please make sure they're printed out beforehand and i say the respondents monitor the program will ensure that the actual student is taking the exam or quiz and not someone that they paid to take it and that no external devices such as another computer or laptop tablets or phone are present and then i say note although the monitor software also requires you to be recorded during the quiz or exam the video will not be viewed unless the student is flagged by the system for suspected cheating and i say cheating is suspected if monitors unable to detect a student's face so leaving during the quiz or exam or turning away frequently from the screen is going to trigger a uh, monitor. It's going to flag me. Okay. So, and then I say, looking at your notes will not flag a system if they're in front of you. And after the quiz or exam is graded, all videos will be deleted. I would like this very much to be true. So I'm going to try to see if there's a way to do that uh, during my meeting with respondents next week. Okay. And, and that's basically it. Um, so I've been using this monitor now since last semester. I used it the second half of my semester. I uh, didn't have issues. I used it during the summer, had no issues during the summer. I did have one student claiming he did not have a webcam. Um, now we at the business school require everyone to have laptops. I'm not sure if that's a university-wide policy or not. It is a business school policy. Um, most laptops today have the webcam. I don't know any if really that do not have a webcam. Um, I, there is ways to get your phone to act as a webcam. So what I told this student, I sent him a link from the web that says, here's a way to get the phone to act as a webcam. There are apps you can install on the phone. I don't know of any personally, but if you do a Google search, you'll find many, many sites and apps saying, here's how you can get your phone to, to use your phone as a webcam. Um, this student ended up getting a, either got a webcam or got it to work or something and never had an issue uh, from that day on. Uh, other than that, this has worked flawless for me and I haven't had any issues with students um, using it or complaining about it. So, so again, that's, that's it. Uh, this is the only tool that we have um i know we're working on maybe getting another one uh there's one called proctorio we met with that company and they do um they have a web-based tool which is nice because there's nothing to download which i love because i try to make everything web-based because um you know i find in my classroom when they have to download and install software it sometimes tends to be a little bit of an issue so if you can do it web-based you know do it and and if we can get a monitor program that's web based that's it's even better and and this proctorial tool looks really promising but i don't think we have it yet so that's something we're working on until then um this is the best we have this uh monitor okay so that's it um i'm gonna go ahead and open it up for questions now and see if anyone has any questions if chris is here um Okay, good. 
won't be able to stay around for the questions. Yeah, he's doing the new faculty orientation. So, um, okay, so Mike, thank you, Michael. Michael's gonna go ahead and copy some of the questions. I appreciate that. Uh, could you discuss some point? Um, do when you get notification that students left the browser, what's your grading policy around this? How do you handle it? Thanks. Um, again, so if, it depends what you mean by leave the browser. If they close the browser during the quiz, because I do get some students tell me um, it crashed on me, right? The browser crashed. And I mean, did it really crash? I, there's no way for me to tell. Did, did, they, did they not know the answers and they closed it themselves and they looked up the answers and then tried to get back into it? I don't know. Um, I do, as I mentioned last session, create a quiz with several variations of questions. So what I do is um, I have that setting set up in Blackboard where I'll show it again. I showed it last week, but I'll go ahead and show it again here. Okay, so it's in test options. It's this one right here, force completion. If you don't check this, they can close out of respondents. Now, remember, they do have to give a reason why they closed. So if they close, it's going to say, give me a reason. So they have to give a reason. Now, if they go ahead and hit their power button, it's going to close. It's not going to ask them for a reason. And they can claim that it crashed. OK, but if you have this checkbox checked, it's going to submit their quiz the way it is. So if you want them to go back into the same quiz, don't check this. What I do is I check this and then I say, don't worry, you can take the quiz again, but I tell them it's gonna be a different quiz. You may see different questions. And then this way, if they tried to cheat while it was off, if they go back and take the quiz, it's gonna be a different question and they won't be able to answer it the same way. Now, I make them, even though it's a different question, I try to test the same concepts with each question. So if they really knew it and it crashed on them, they can easily answer the new question they get. If they tried to cheat and you throw a new question at them, even though it's similar, they're not gonna be able to answer it. So at least that that's, that's my take on it. So that's what I do. Again, I don't know if it's perfect or if it's the best way, but that's how I handle that, okay? Um, if they actually leave, and go into a different room and it flags me on monitor, um, I just give them a warning and say, hey, you know, uh, you were in the red and they know I'm going to look at it if it's in the red because I tell them that the first day of class. It's in the red, I'm going to look at it. So I looked at it, you left for five minutes and that's okay this time, but don't, please don't do that again. You can't leave, uh, you know, if you have to use the restroom, make sure you use the restroom before. If you have some type of a chronic condition where maybe you have to leave during the quiz, okay, um, then, you know, I, I just say provide a doctor's note. Let me know if you need that accommodation. Um, I tell them the same thing in the classroom, right? I suffer from a condition myself, which may require that. So, um, you know, I would be open with the professor, look, I suffer from this condition. I may have to leave during a quiz if, if, if I need to. And, and then, okay, that's fine. I understand. If you can give me some type of notification, like a doctor's notice to say you have this, I'm fine with that. I'll make that accommodation. Or, or don't even tell me, by the way, you know, go through uh, student success because, right, because there's HIPAA violations that you, you don't want to cross. So have them go through student success. Have the student success tell you, hey, this student may need to leave during a quiz or exam, right? And, and that's fine, okay? And they, this way you don't even have to know any personal issues they may have. Um, what do you use? Uh, why do you use a password for hybrid courses but not online? Uh, that's just to make sure that they show up in class. So if you have a policy that says you have to be in class to take a quiz, then you may want to use a password. Um, if you're using the monitor program, it's not necessary. Right. I do it if, if 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 it's in class, I use the password because they have to be in class so I can proctor them. If they're taking it from home, I can't proctor them. But if you're using a monitor program, you can proctor them anyway. So when it's online, I don't use a password because of that. 
okay, because of the monitor software. Uh, can students deactivate their webcam on their laptop? Our response automatically turns it on. Um, well, remember that respondents will totally lock down their computer. So they're not going to have, uh, they're not going to be able to go into their settings on their computer to deactivate the webcam. So they won't be able to do that. Um, as long as you're using the um, respondents browser, whether you use monitor or not, right, they won't be able to go into settings and change it. Um, are materials posted on Blackboard available to students while taking the test if they're using respondents? They are. Um, so they can access Blackboard. The only problem that you may have is if they click on the link, and let me see if there's a setting here. If they click on the link to, um, okay, it looks like it's by default, open test in new window. If you say yes to this, which by default it looks like it does, it's going to open the quiz in a separate tab. And then they can go back to the original Blackboard tab and access Blackboard from there. If you don't want them to go back into Blackboard, say no here. So this way it will open the test in the same tab that they had Blackboard in, and then they won't be able to go back and access it. OK. OK, so hopefully I answered all the questions. Are there any, anything else or maybe something I didn't address? Okay. Yeah, thank you for giving that link to the Brown Center. This is a link if you want to look at the previous sessions. They're up there. Okay, so it does require a laptop. I don't know if it has the webcam in the handbook. It didn't used to. I don't know if they updated that or not. I did update it in the syllabus, though. So I do say for online courses, so, so basically, everything here is right from the website, uh, from the handbook. Down here is what I added. For online courses, desktops are per also permitted, right? So yeah, they can they can have a, a desktop, right, if they're home. I said, however, any laptop or desktop must be equipped with a webcam. So I do put that. Okay. Monitor is good. Uh, check if student has multiple monitors, right? I say that's 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 right, uh, uh, Bob. Um, you have to watch out for that. That's why I like to do the environment check. The environment check will make sure that they don't have any monitors. If they have the three monitors, make sure it's off. If they're looking at the other monitors, it it may flag that. By the way, so you can tell. Like for instance, when I had students using external laptops, they were looking around and I had to tell them look you can't have another device there this was last semester by the way where I didn't use the environment check in the beginning um, I actually don't think I used it at all last semester just because it was such a drastic change for them I didn't want to you know put put give them too much stress um, so I said I'm not going to do the, the check just make sure you're looking at the screen that's all and you can do that. But but now, since it's all online, I do have them do that quick check. Uh, that's right. So turning on the webcam check, right, does make sure that they have the webcam. And it is working. PC may not have a camera. That's true. So they do have to get one. Um, I don't know if IT, I know if it was in an uh, on-campus environment, Send them to IT. IT usually has devices they can loan them. Uh, I don't know if online or not. I should probably check. But um, but they could buy purchase one, or like I said, there are sites out there that show how to make the um, the phone a webcam. Okay. Okay. Uh, can you paste a paragraph in your syllabus about respondents into the chat? Yeah, sure, I can do that. Um, let me go ahead and take my text here. Oops. Select tool. Okay, that helps. There we go. Okay. 
And I do put that link to the respondents. This is, again, that link is important because that is the Stetson Respondus Lockdown uh, browser installation. Okay, so, and by the way, that site detects what computer they have. So if they have a Mac, it will have them download the Mac version. If they have a PC, it will have them down. It, it will detect it in, on the site. So they don't, there's not a special link for Mac and not a special one for PC. There used to be, and now they have it where they detect the computer you're using. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, so even with the multiple monitors, though, um, I don't think you'll be able to access them if you're using the respondents. I know another concern is the virtual machines, right? So some may ask, well, what if a student has a virtual machine and they're running, right, a Windows, another Windows operating system inside of a virtual machine and they use Respondus from that? Respondus does detect if it's running from a virtual machine. So if it's on a virtual machine, Respondus will not run. Okay, it has to run on the actual computer. Okay, so um, that's another good thing. And, you know, there's not, not, there's no software that's foolproof out there. They're going to be able to, if you have a tech savvy student, they may find a way around Respondus. There are sites out there that, now you do have to be pretty technical to do it, but I know there's sites out there that say, hey, here's how you can fool Respondus. You know, but I think of it this way. If you're in the classroom, you can watch your class like a hawk, but there's going to be a student that knows how to cheat. Okay, and they're going to be able to cheat. So unfortunately, I mean, th there's really no way, right? But um, but if I can get most students to be honest when taking a quiz or exam, then then. And by the way, this does work. Um, last semester when I used, well, I'm, I'm going to stop the recording now um, when I discuss this. Uh, so let me go ahead and stop the recording.